It's October and it's Breast Cancer Prevention Month. It's one of my favorite months of the year, but this is a really important topic. We know that today, almost one in eight women in the United States are affected by breast cancer in their lifetime. And the conversation around breast cancer prevention is a serious one and one not to take lightly. Now we have so much work that's already been done and that is exciting and really great news because we also have almost 3.3 million breast cancer survivors, yay. But I wanna take this conversation deeper, so let's start with the ABCs of breast cancer prevention. First off, ground rules here. Routine screening still matters. And what does that mean? It means a couple of things. You've got to know your family history. You have to know if there's been breast cancer in the generations before you and understand what your personal risk might be. Once you know your family history, then screening ourselves every month. So many of us are not doing this. I think I forget too, but screening every month to make sure that you're not picking up anything new in your breast is really important as well. And hey, it's easy to do. So maybe put a reminder on your phone so you remember to do that every single month, maybe at the same time every month as well. When it comes to mammograms and ultrasounds and MRIs and all the different screening techniques, we know the recommendations, right? So it's 40 for women that don't have a history of breast cancer and they're supposed to now be doing it every three years. For women that have a family history of breast cancer, that number drops to 35. And if you've had a personal history of breast cancer, your doctor probably has you on your own schedule. All right, so those are the ABCs of breast cancer prevention. And if you like this information, remember, I'm posting wellness tips every Thursday on my YouTube channel, so like and subscribe. All right, we've gotta talk more. We've gotta talk about what else we can do about breast cancer prevention. This is what I am so passionate about. And this is a message of hope because we can keep these genetics quiet and we can beat breast cancer together. But here's what you don't know. Your diet matters. When it comes to a conversation around breast cancer, your diet makes a really big difference. Let me tell you how. Now, first of all, we know that when we don't break estrogen down, that our bodies increase their risk for breast cancer. How do you break estrogen down? Well, it depends on key nutrients. You've got to have enough fiber in your diet. You have to have something called indole-3-carbinol in your diet, and you have to have the right ratio of fats. Let's break those down a little bit further. Getting that fiber in can come from different sources, but a plant-based, a predominantly plant-based diet provides us with the 40 or 50 grams of fiber that we need every day to take estrogen from point A to point B so the body can use it and then get rid of what it doesn't need. We also know that cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, some of my favorites, they have indole-3 carbonyl in it. And again, that takes estrogen and chops it up, sending it off to where the body can use it, but then getting rid and dumping what we can't use anymore. And keeping those estrogen levels in check and the storage of estrogen levels in check is a key concept around breast cancer prevention. Your fats matter, and this is so important. Getting the right ratio of fats makes such a difference. We know that getting the right amount of omega-3 fats in, the right amount of omega-9 fats, those are protective fats. They help in the conversation around estrogen balance. What's actually happening is most of us are getting too much saturated fat, or we're overheating our good fats so it's not doing what we need them to do. Getting in those two servings of fatty fishes per week, like salmon or tuna, can get those omega-3 levels up to where they need to be. A tablespoon of ground flax seeds every day provides you with the fiber and with the omega-3 fats that we need when we're talking breast cancer prevention. Getting in about four to six servings of those cruciferous vegetables and getting those omega-9 fats in by taking maybe a tablespoon of olive oil Oil every day also helps us metabolize estrogen better. All right, your diet is connected to another really important topic around breast cancer prevention. The gut, ground zero is what I call the gut. The gut is responsible for, again, taking estrogen, breaking it down, eliminating it so that it doesn't build up, your body doesn't build up excessive amounts of estrogen. Now, how do you know if you have a gut issue? Well, some of you are simply not going to the bathroom every day. Guys, that's, that's sign number one. You should be pooping every single day. And yes, I said poop on this video, but you should be pooping every single day. That's one way to know that you're breaking estrogen down. If you've got bloating, if you've got reflux, those are other signs that your gut may not be behaving. 
why you might not be getting enough fiber, you might be getting too much sugar, which overgrows yeast or candida in the gut, messing up estrogen metabolism, or you simply may not be resting. We know the gut needs periods of rest where it's not getting food in over and over again, and it helps to metabolize all the different hormones better. So your gut matters, your diet matters, but here's another fact, your toxic load matters. Now that's another mouthful, but here's what I see in practice all the time. I see a lot of estrogen receptor positive cancer, progesterone receptor positive cancer, all of that is hormone based and ties back to the diet and the gut and your genetics. But we also see a lot of cancers that are negative, triple negatives. Those are usually environmentally mediated. We are storing estrogen. We have become estrogen storing machines because of our body care products, our makeup products, our air quality, our water quality, the foods we're eating. They have things called endocrine disruptors, phthalates, organophosphates, magic big words that essentially are messing up how we metabolize our hormones. So it's so important to evaluate and understand your toxic load and to really start to clean up. I always say start with food, clean up your food, then start looking at your personal body care products, then look within the home, then you can start to look outside the home because we just don't have a lot of control. So your toxic load matters. And one final category before I let you guys go, we've got to manage stress. Many of us are chronically stressed. But here's what stress does. It spikes your cortisol. That spikes insulin. Those two spikes trigger inflammation. Inflammation then does its thing and cooks up issues with your hormones and gets you in trouble. We want to manage our stress. And for those of you who have experienced a trauma, so many of you have experienced divorce or a loss or a big change in your life that's caused a lot of upheaval, we hold that in our bodies and we want to find ways to release it so that our bodies don't work against us. So again, that's the deeper conversation around breast cancer prevention. It's about your diet, it's about your gut, it's about your toxic load, your stress, and it's also about checking your numbers. You've gotta know your numbers. You've gotta know where estrogen is, estrone, your thyroid hormones, your insulin numbers, cortisol, DHEA, testosterone. It's so critical to know what these numbers are for you, but to also know what the appropriate ranges should be. I hope this information is helpful. I want you all to stay healthy, stay well, stay super powered. We can and will beat breast cancer. It is October and breast cancer awareness is so important, but the conversation around prevention should go beyond ABC and into all these other topics. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and I post new videos every Thursday.